Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, homestead in the desert. We're looking at my shower and yep, I put a flap on this side here and I did some fine tuning. I took the two barrels down, I fixed the leak on them, but I didn't do it the way I was saying I was going to do it by taking the RTV silicone off and putting inserts in there because I didn't have the inserts and I wasn't going to drive all the way into town and back in a 50 mile round trip just to go get uh, uh, two dollars worth of plastic fittings. I'll pick those up, I'll put them inside the storage uh, unit here and I'll have them ready so if I get another leak I'll drain them down and I'll uh, take care of it at that point. <clears throat> so for right now it is working, I, it is in service, but uh, I want to show you some of the things I did here. One is I put that flap on because the wind comes from that direction mostly and sometimes you're in here trying to take a shower and the wind just blows the water off the shower head so you can't get wet. Speaking of shower heads, notice that I don't have a regular shower head like you would see in a house. What I did was I took a PVC cap, half inch cap, and a short nipple and I screwed that in and then I drilled a bunch of holes into the bottom of this to make this a good wash i mean it really comes down when it when it you pull that chain and you get a really wet real quick and uh with the shower heads that you get in the houses they've got widgets in them nowadays and they're not designed for gravity feed they, they have to have pressure behind them so if you put a regular shower head in here it's just going to trickle on you so make your own it's easier all right so I did that. I also blocked the back here, all except for the top section. And uh, I, I may do, still do that in the future, but I'm going to see how it works out because that's higher than my head. So the, the wind is going to hit the container before it comes through there. I may be okay. I put two more boards up on top here and I moved the mirror down on the outside so that it's in front of the sink. And uh, <clears throat> then what, what I did was... This is my, my system I came up with for locking this down. This is a piece of the shiplap that I used for these three pieces. I had some scrap left over. This is a piece of shiplap I had some scrap left over. These were scraps that were left over. So it all came into play. So what I do is I lift up on this until it clears right there. Then I can push this open. And on this side, I bring this lever down and lock it into place just like that. And now I've got a, a, an airflow and a view and I can see what's going on out there. So this is my neat little rig here. And uh, I think that'll be just fine. I will close that up when I'm all done here because uh, I don't want the winds to come up and tear that thing off. That's why I made it so it can lock down. All right, I also fixed the door so that it latches onto this metal piece uh, for when we're in here, but you can still reach out and use the uh, outer one if it's kind of windy. I also put two more, two more braces up here to give this a little sturdiness because it did rock back and forth a little bit. It was uh, be getting beaten by the wind, so the uh, screws kind of like loosen up in the wood and stuff like that. All right, so I got that. And I keep my hanger out here because I'll hang my towel on the lower one here and put this clip over the towel so the wind won't blow it away. But I could also hang a, uh, a robe or something over the top of here or um, a pair of shorts or whatever. So I'm, when I come out of the shower, I can just grab them and pull them on. All right. Then, like I said, I moved the, um, the mirror down because it, it used to be all the way up by that screw up at the top there. I moved it down now so it's right where you can see at it. And um, that little mirror there is damaged from the wind and sand, but I can still use it to hold toothbrushes and hairbrushes, things like that. I added a shelf here. Not a real get gorgeous one because it's outdoors. I don't have to have a gorgeous shelf outdoors. But there's some place to put uh, the toothpaste and a bar of soap, things like that, so it's not sitting down here on the bottom of the sink. I'm going to finish cleaning the sink out here a little later um, maybe tomorrow because i've got to get a, a 12 inch extension for down here 
Um, that, that one's not working. And I see a little drip here. Huh. Where's that coming from? Oh, you know where it's coming from is... Nope, it's not coming from there. It's coming from inside the, the wrap. Well, why is it coming from inside the wrap, you ask? I don't know. It doesn't seem to be wet that way. It's wet that way. I'll have to uh, pull that whole thing, pull that clamp, and see what's going on after the video. All right. So, where are we at here? Oh, I'm going on six minutes. I'm going to go down to the... Uh, garden house real quick because I promised one of the subscribers that I would do a segment on barbecues and smokers and so forth and so on and uh, I've got, got everything all set up for that ready to go so we're going to make a bit quick loop around here I'll show you this weather is beautiful again today uh, it's 71 outside uh, 76 outside 71 in the shade and uh, earlier today that whole mountain range over there was getting rained on and <laughs> rain's not even predicted until now it says wednesday thursday friday and saturday so who knows what do they do look out the window all right there's my grass i cut that down yesterday and gave it to the chickens and already it's got a whole bunch of new blades growing out of it that grows fast here's my cilantro you can see them all popping up there. My uh, green onion back there. Um, nothing in that one, but there is some desert grass popping up out of it. Here's my radishes. And uh, the carrots over here. I got some coming up, and I got some desert plant in here. Let's get him out of the way. We don't need him in there. All right. So... We got those coming up and something else growing over here. It looks like another desert plant. I'll pull that up in a little, a little while. But the green onions in there, or the Walla Walla onions in there, and my kale. And my beets. And I'll, not all the beets came up, but the beet goes on. All right. We're going to move around here. All these trees are in dormancy right now. Uh, but with the spring weather... I'm probably, in a couple of weeks, I'll see buds plop popping out of there. Um, this tree took a little bit of beating, dried some leaves out. Uh, I think it's choking in that little bucket. I'm going to have to get it transplanted into something bigger. i got a carrot down there and a carrot up there and, and some more onions over here. Um, there's some more grass growing. I did cut off half of that yesterday. Um, this is my little holly oak tree. It's uh, in its winter state. And then here's my um, parsley, ruffled parsley, and my cilantro uh, that I planted before the winter. That's doing okay. And it looks like this uh, tangerine tree might have survived the winter. My grapevine should be getting ready to start putting sprouts out pretty soon. And this is plenty wet, as you can see down here. It's, it's not drying or, uh, for water. It's got plenty of water in it. And... Uh, my apple tree, my Fuji apple, uh, is in dormancy right now. But we'll so start seeing buds on those in a couple of weeks. All right, let's move on up the line and keep this going. Now, I've got to close this so critters don't get in. And we got some more clouds moving in, and the sun has just gone behind them. But you can see all of that was the rain that came through earlier but it, it all bypassed me uh, nothing went over me it went all the way around me like it always does all right so i was asked um what kind of smoker do i like well i tried a bunch of different ones and i'll show you another one in a little while but what i really do like is the weber kettle this is a 27 inch kettle i love this thing because you can smoke in it, you can grill in it, you can barbecue in it, you can uh, roast in it, There's, you can slow cook in it. There's all kinds of things you can do with this one unit. So this is my favorite of all. I love this thing. 
down at the bottom you see two handles okay one of those handles the bottom one removes a pan there that catches all the ash that comes out the bottom so you can clean the, the barbecue out and i'll show you that in a second here okay down in the bottom it has three little blades there and those are attached to this handle so you can run it back and forth and it scrapes all of the junk down those holes and into that pan so it's easy to clean now uh, you see my setup here i did that uh, on purpose i'm not going to use it tonight but it doesn't doesn't matter because i just put the cover on it'll be fine but this is for um, time cooking l over a long period of time. And you can make this go all the way halfway around or all the way around and stop with a little gap in between it, depending on how long you want to cook. So what I've got here is probably uh, going to last about almost two hours. And it's not going to be a high heat. It's going to be a, a low heat for cooking or smoking for a long period. So what I do is I start with three on the bottom then two on top of that, and then one on top of that. So that's what the whole thing is. So you're going to light just this end, okay? Once those get uh, ash on them and grate up, then you can start your, uh, put your food on, close the cover, and get ready to cook. And this will slowly burn through the line and keep coming all the way around, depending on how long you have it. So, and if you want it a little hotter, go four across on the bottom, and then three, then two, and then one. That'll be hotter. I found that this with the three, two, one works just great for doing long cooking roasts like tri-tips and uh, chicken and things like that. Now, you can also use um, barbecue pellets or smoker pellets. And these are, oops, we got a little plastic in there. These are little hardwood um, hickory uh pellets so what you do is you would put piles of these in in different locations here so every now and then it would put some smoke in there and you don't need a lot i mean this is probably enough to do three locations on that run because uh once these things start smoking they're going to put out a lot of smoke and you'll see smoke coming out of the top of your barbecue the pan Okay, I left the label in this so you can see what I'm, I'm using. The cheapest thing you can find. This is an 8-inch uh, uh, square cake pan. And you got three of these things. I think the three of them were um, 70, 75 cents or 79 cents or something like that on sale. So I save these and I use them for drip pans when I'm cooking a chicken or a roast. I put them underneath to catch the dripping so they don't go down and cause flare-ups. All right. Another thing I did, oh, oh, this is another nice feature of this. Let me put this back in place while I'm at it, is this has flip-ups on the edge of the grill. Okay, so if I needed to add more charcoal, I don't have to take the food and everything off. I can just flip one of these open, add more charcoal, put the cover back on and keep on cooking. Next, not all of them come with gauges. This is a universal gauge. Uh, I bought this in uh, one of the big box stores. I forget what it is. And this tells you what the temperature is inside. So depending on what you're cooking, you can keep your temperature under control and see what's going on there. And the way you control it is with the uh, vents here at the top. The, the more you have them open, the hotter it's going to burn inside. The more you close it off, the, the cooler it's going to be. And you can also use the same scrapers down here that you use for cleaning to close off those vents inside a little bit and cut down the amount of air coming up from the bottom. Beautiful all-around unit. Now, you can use um, hardwood lump charcoal like this uh, for smoking or for barbecuing either way. I like my Kingsford for um, charcoal. It, it burns the best. It's nice and hot. And uh, that's uh, Henry Ford's uh, son-in-law, uh, uh, Mr. King, who, who put together this whole thing with uh, the old wood from making Model T Fords. So they, they called it King's Ford and a little history on barbecue. All right, here's a new uh, premium temperature gauge that you can buy. I think I got this one at Home Depot. And this one also tells you 
your great best smoking temperature, best barbecue temperature, and your best grilling temperatures. So you can actually take one of those. You have to drill a hole in your cover of your barbecue and insert that. And I use a, a Unibit. This one comes from Harbor Freight Tools. They sell a two pack of these and a three pack. Um, doesn't matter which ones you get, they are handy to have. And I used it to make my um, uh, replacement for my charcoal lighter. This is the one where you put the charcoal in the top, put uh, cr crumble up newspaper in the bottom, you light the newspaper through the hole, and wait for the charcoal to get going. Don't leave it sitting on wood when you do that. Put it on top of the barbecue grill. And I, I got the handle from an old one that was completely rusted out and trash. And I just took a piece of uh, sheet metal and made it myself. If you're using galvanized, make sure you burn it off real good before you use it for cooking because uh, galvanized will give you some ill effects you don't want. All right, moving down the line because we're already coming up on 16 minutes here. This is a smoker that I've been using for years. It's a very inexpensive smoker. It comes with a generic gauge on the top here. It says warm, ideal, and hot. Okay, so you just want to keep it in ideal. That's where you go with it. All right, now this one comes with two of those pans at the bottom. The other one is inside the container. Um, one is for water at this level. The other one goes all the way at the bottom for charcoal. And I made this little thing here. So when I'm working up high on this thing, I put that there and I put my charcoal right here. So it keeps it up above everything and holds it in one group and gives me lots of heat. I can move it over for indirect heating or whatever. So again, if you use galvanized, make sure you burn it off before you use it for cooking. Um, I like lining everything with aluminum foil. Uh, this one hasn't been used since last year, so excuse it. It's got a little bit of cobweb and stuff in it. It'll get clean before. Now uh, you see it's sitting up high here because this is a, a charcoal type barbecue or smoker. And when you're using this one, one thing to remember, when you're using charcoal, you have to leave the door open. If you close that door up, it'll uh, choke your uh, flames out and it'll go out on you halfway through cooking. So you wanna make sure you leave this open. And what I do to make sure it doesn't close is I turn the latch like that so it can't close on me. It lets air in and it, and it keeps on going. Now, something else that I've done to modify this <coughs> is, let me get this off of here, is this is designed to set on the ground like that. It's got three legs on it, and it's got three of these tabs like this down at the bottom so that the um, charcoal bucket can go all the way down, and then this would be a water bucket for wet smoking. Charcoal doesn't last very long, and you have to keep putting more in. So, I have this... Bayou Classic unit, and it's just the right size to fit underneath this unit. So I can hook that up to a propane bottle, and I can keep a flame going underneath it for a long period of time if I have to. And I can adjust that flame up or down for the amount of heat I need. And I'm going to keep that in the ideal. All right. Last. Here's some apple smoked wood chips. If you're going to use smoker wood chips, remember to soak them in water for an hour or two before you're ready to go. And then get your fire going, get, get your charcoal nice and hot, and then you can put those in. If you're using propane, you can't put those on top of your charcoal. So what you do, you still soak them, get them wet, wrap them up in a little foil pouch, aluminum foil pouch, and then you can throw them down. Um, below the flame on a char on a uh, propane barbecue, and they'll they'll burn on the inside, and the smoke will come out of the foil and give you your smoky flavor. All right, little tricks, little fun. The reason I got into this today is because the weather has been so nice. I've been working on my tan out here for two days in a row, uh, shirtless, just shorts and uh, flip flops, and. Uh, it's just beautiful, so I'm thinking, hey, barbecue season's on its way. Um, so we've got some rain coming, maybe. If it does come, it comes. If it doesn't, hey, it might be barbecue. All right, everybody. 
that's all for today. Uh, don't forget, give me a thumbs up down there if you like my videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you have subscribed already, share it with friends. There's a place to click share down there, and you can share it through any social media you want. Um, I don't use a whole bunch of social media myself. All I use is YouTube so and email. But uh, other than that, enjoy yourselves and share it with your friends. Let them enjoy some too. And uh, you can leave comments, questions, and snide remarks. Yep, that's right, snidely. You left me a snide remark. Thank you. G-Bear signing off.